Hey guys, by now you have seen all the Mexico vlogs, they have all gone live and I am back in Belgium. Through the vlogs you might have seen some places that you would like to visit yourself. But you might not have two and a half months to do exactly the same trip as I did. So I split up my trip into a couple of different itineraries. Mexico is such a huge country, so it can be difficult to know where to even start. Especially for Europeans, it's really hard to grasp the distances within Mexico and it's easy to completely misjudge them. So here are my realistic itineraries for Mexico. The majority of people who go to Mexico for the first time will probably go to the south. They will probably visit the Quintana Roo and Yucatan states because that's where the cenotes are, where you can see one of the seven world wonders, Chichen Itza, a lot of Mayan ruins, mangroves and the most amazing Caribbean beaches. For this you will land in Cancun and Cancun is just an all-in resort hotspot basically. If you can, go and visit Isla Mujeres. This is an amazing island off the coast of Cancun with the most amazing beaches. I prefer Isla Mujeres to Cancun itself. I would say you don't need that much time in Cancun and Isla Mujeres because you will see plenty of amazing beaches further along the itinerary. From Cancun you can either go in the direction of Isla Holbox, which is quite similar to Isla Mujeres but maybe a bit less touristy still but also a lot more basic. Now you do have amazing hotels with beautiful private beaches but it is a bit more basic when it comes to the roads. At Holbox you can do a kayak tour through the mangroves, you can go swimming in bioluminescent plankton or you can take three island boat tour which will take you around the uninhabited islands around Holbox. I would say with three nights you have plenty of time to explore Holbox unless you want to relax some more. From Isla Mujeres you will make your way to Valladolid. Around Valladolid there are amazing cenotes. You can easily rent a bike and drive around from one cenote to the next. And it is also from where you will start your excursion or your day trip to Chichen Itza. From Valladolid I also did a day trip to Rio Lagartos and to the mangroves to see flamingos, crocodiles and the salt lakes but those are only visible during the dry season. So do take that into account. In Valladolid you can easily stay four nights. You will definitely be able to fill up the days with amazing activities. From Valladolid you will make your way to Merida which is the capital of the state Yucatan. You can also visit some more cenotes from there and another famous Mayan ruin which is incredibly beautiful which is called Uxmal. Merida is also close to the beach, so you can take a bus to Progreso, which is a beautiful beach town. And it also has the longest pier in the world. Aside from that, Merida is known for its gastronomy and the amazing Yucatecan cuisine, so make sure to try that out. I did a food tour, for example. In Merida, you can stay for at least three nights. There is plenty to see in and around the city. From Merida, it is on to Campeche. Campeche is one of my favorite cities. It often gets skipped by a lot of people who do this itinerary, but it's a beautiful city. The ruins of Etna are really close by and the cheapest ones I have visited out of all the ruins. So I do recommend making a little stop there, even if it's just for one or two nights. From Campeche, you can either make your way to Chiapas, where your first stop will be Palenque. I spent four nights there on an amazing tour through the jungle to the most amazing Mayan ruins and also some incredible waterfalls. I do recommend you visit Chiapas during the dry season which is when the waterfalls have an amazing turquoise blue color. Further into Chiapas is San Cristobal de las Casas and this was one of my favorite places in all of Mexico. It's a mountain town and the excursions you can do from there are incredible. You can go to the El Chiflon waterfall and the Monte Bello lakes which are honestly unreal. Also again I recommend to go in the dry season. And then the Sumidero Canyon was unbelievable. It's a huge canyon and you take a boat tour through the canyon Afterwards you go to the viewpoints. Do note that if you go to Chiapas in the dry season, you probably won't see the waterfalls, but you will see plenty of beautiful waterfalls elsewhere. The canyon is mainly just an amazing place to see crocodiles, spider monkeys, and it's just very impressive. 
You can also go on a tour of the different villages around San Cristóbal de las Casas where they show you how the artisanal products are made but also just see the amazing indigenous culture mixed up with the religious culture and it is something I haven't experienced anywhere else yet. Very unique and I would say definitely make sure you spend at least five nights in San Cristóbal. Both Palenque and San Cristóbal can be a part of another trip that I will talk about next. So you can either skip Chiapas or fly back from San Cristobal to Bacalar. You can get from Campeche to Bacalar as well and a lot of people will do it via Calac Mool. Everyone I have come across my trip has praised Calac Mool as the best temple to visit. It is also the hardest to get to, but apparently it's so worth it because it's in the middle of the jungle. That's why it's so hard to get to. If you're early enough, you can see the animals of the jungle on the temples and it sounds like such a magical place and I'm sad I haven't been there yet. I actually haven't done the next part of the itinerary myself yet because I'm saving it to do it with the rest of Central America. So I am planning to come from Belize into Bacalar and then from Bacalar visit Calakmul and visit the rest of the Riviera Maya, which I will talk about now. So why go to Bacalar? Bacalar is one of the most beautiful spots along the Riviera Maya. It is every backpacker's favorite spot along the coast. In Bacalar I would stay at least two nights to be able to visit the rapids and the lagoon and enjoy the incredible sunrises. From there you can go to Tulum. Near Tulum you can dive in many cenotes, which is an incredible and very unique experience and I can't wait to do it myself. Near Tulum you can easily stay for three nights so that you're able to visit all the cenotes, maybe even the ruins and there's also a beautiful nature reserve between Bacalar and Tulum that you might want to visit from there. Then from Tulum you go on to Playa del Carmen where at the moment you can dive with bull sharks. It is now November and it is something I would really like to do but Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it because I cut my chin open in Holbox. And then aside from that, you can go to Cozumel, which is an island in front of Playa del Carmen. And there you can snorkel, you can dive. It has an amazing reef. And then from Playa del Carmen, you can make your way back to Cancun. For Playa del Carmen and Cozumel, it'll just depend on how much longer you want to be on the beach because you will have seen a lot of beach already and depending on if you're interested in snorkeling and scuba diving, it might not be as interesting for you to spend more days here. I would say it is best to calculate about three weeks for this itinerary. Maybe even a bit more if you want to go to Chiapas as well. What is the other itinerary that includes Chiapas? Well, that would be the itinerary from Mexico City to the south. Mexico City is a metropole. It is an incredible city. I absolutely love it because there is so much you can do. I recommend at least five days to explore Mexico City well. For example, on the first day you can do two free walking tours, one of the historic city center and the next of the food in Roma and Condesa neighborhoods. I really enjoyed both tours and you immediately get a good feel of the whole city and get to know your way around. Then the next day you can rent a bike and drive along the Reforma Avenue, pass by the Angel of Independence and arrive at the Bosque de Chapultepec. This is a huge park which has many museums like the National Anthropology Museum which is one of my favorite museums in the world but also a castle and a lot of squirrels. Nearby the Bosque de Chapultepec is the Polanco neighborhood which is a bit more of a fancy neighborhood where the embassies are etc. And there you have the Museo Sumaya which is completely free to visit and the building itself is a work of art. Near the city you can visit the Teotihuacan ruins. These pyramids are magnificent. You can even do a sunrise hot air balloon flight over the pyramids and it looks incredible. In the evening you can go to a Lucha Libre wrestling game which is so much fun. It's a bit more theater than it is the actual sport but it is so much fun. And then you can spend another day south of the city where you can find Xochimilco, which is a place where you find a lot of canals and you can take a boat ride through the canals. Make sure you have a group with you, bring some drinks, bring some food and some music and have a good day. 
In the same direction is the Frida Kahlo Museum. Frida Kahlo is a really famous Mexican artist and this is basically her old house which is blue and very picturesque and it talks you through her life and her work and it's really fascinating. She was overall an incredibly fascinating woman. If you've seen all of those things and you're still not sick of Mexico City like me, you can take day trips, for example, to the Nevado de Toluca. This is a volcano that you can climb. Or to the city Tashko. And Tashko is one of the cities that has surprised me the most. It is a beautiful city located on the hills with all white houses, mostly just white beetles passing through the streets. And it is beautiful. And the day tour also included some breathtaking caves. If you want to go in that direction to Tashko, maybe you just want to do it by yourself, then you will pass through Cuernavaca, which has an amazing waterfall just near the city center. And next to Cuernavaca is Tepoztlan. And Tepoztlan has these amazing magical mountains that you can just see the clouds roll over all day long. And it is so beautiful. So if you want to visit Tashko, Tepoztlan and Cuernavaca, add another three days to your Mexico City itinerary. Then from Mexico City, I said that we would go to the south. So now we're going to the south. South of Mexico City is Puebla. Puebla is a beautiful city, very colorful. And I visited the oldest library in the Americas amazing free museums. It is also close to Cholula. Cholula is a village that is very close to the volcanoes that separate Mexico City and Puebla. It is also home to the biggest pyramid in the world. That's not in height but in volume. And on top of it is a beautiful yellow church. I would say you need at least three nights in Puebla to really enjoy everything the city has to offer and also go to Cholula. Next up is Oaxaca City. In Oaxaca City, you have to spend at least three nights. There is so much to explore. More than anything, the different cultures, the food is amazing. You can go to Monte Alban ruins, which are great ruins. But aside from that, it has an amazing location, which gives you an amazing view. It's basically on the top of this mountain and it's incredible. The Yerbe El Agua waterfall has been one of my favorite places in all of Mexico. It's a petrified waterfall, there's natural sources, there are turquoise pools that you can swim in. It's unreal. It's been closed for a while, but now it's open again. You can also go on a tour that visits a lot of artisans in the area, like uh, the Barro Negro, so the black clay pottery, also the alebrijes, the colorful hand-carved wooden statues that represent spirit animals and so much more. Honestly, Oaxaca has so much to offer. If you can go to Oaxaca, go at the end of July to also be there for the Gelaguetza, which is a festival of all the cultures that there are within the state of Oaxaca. It's also a great place to be for Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, at the start of November, because then everything is beautifully decorated. They have parades. From Oaxaca, you can also go to San Jose del Pacifico. This is a place in the mountains, which is known for the magic mushrooms. I didn't go there, but it's possible. From Oaxaca City, you will make your way to the coast of the state of Oaxaca. Puerto Escondido is the easiest place to reach. And from there, you can also visit Chacawa, which is north of it, or Mazunte, Zipolite, and Huatulco, which are south of it. This entire coast is beautiful. It's the Pacific Coast, lots of huge waves, a lot of hippie culture, and a lot of marine animals that you can spot like turtles, dolphins, even whales in the right season. It's honestly an incredible part of all of Mexican's coastline. From the beaches of Oaxaca, you can then go to Chapas and spend the nine nights that I talked about in San Cristobal and Palenque, and then make your way back to Mexico City and fly out from there. For this itinerary, including Mexico City and Chiapas, you will need about three weeks to do it well. But you can easily shorten it by not going to Chiapas, for example. Another way that you can go across the country from Mexico City is to the northwest, which perhaps is the most off the beaten path, but also holds the most beautiful, colorful, picturesque cities. An incredible part of the coast as well that doesn't have as many backpackers but a lot of locals as well and is equally if not even more beautiful. 
And don't forget about the tequila. In Oaxaca, you have the mezcal, which is made from the same plant, but it's a different distillery process. And also only in a certain amount of states can they call the drink actual tequila. It's like champagne. So we'll start from Mexico City, as I said, about five nights. And then you make your way to Querétaro. Querétaro has a beautiful historic city center. Also go to the viewpoint by night to see the aqueduct and all the lights light up. From Querétaro, you can visit Peña de Bernal, Tequisquiapan, which are beautiful, smaller pueblos mágicos, magic villages. If you have an extra seven days to spare, you can pass through the Sierra Gorda Mountains and La Huasteca, San Luis Potosí region, which has the most incredible waterfalls with turquoise blue water, again, not a rainy season, and also the surrealist garden of Edward James. I was lucky to already have visited the surrealist garden of Edward James and some of the waterfalls in La Huasteca, but I definitely want to go back to also visit the Sierra Gorda and the amazing Mirador de Cuatro Palos. So hopefully that'll be in my next Mexico trip. Anyway, that's if you have another week. If not, you can just continue your journey from Querétaro to San Miguel de Allende. This is one of the most famous towns in Mexico because all of the houses are in this ochre color or a dark red, very picturesque. It also has an amazing church and it's just a very cozy little town. I would recommend to only stay for one night because there's not that much to do other than just enjoy the city itself. Then from San Miguel de Allende, you make your way to Guanajuato. And wow, Guanajuato is one of my favorite cities in all of Mexico because it is the most colorful city out of all of them. I'm talking every single color under the sun. All the houses are painted. There are tunnels underneath the city for the cars to move through. So a lot of the city is very accessible for people on foot. There is a beautiful viewpoint, a theater, so many beautiful squares and parks and an amazing uh, covered mercado. So a huge market with lots of regional products. And I was there during the national holiday. So I was able to witness this incredible celebration of Mexico with so many people, fireworks, lots of tequila, maybe a bit too much. That is on the night of the 15th of September. I would recommend staying at least two nights because there is a mummy museum you can visit. You can go to the mines around the city and the city itself just has so much to offer. So definitely stay for at least two nights. From Guanajuato, you make your way to Guadalajara. This is the second biggest city in all of Mexico. You can walk around the city in about a day. You will have seen everything, visited the most important museums and also go to Tlaquepaque. I would recommend you to do this in the evening when there is a lot more going on. It is the place to be for mariachis and mariachi music, but also it's just a very cozy little part of town. And Guadalajara is the capital of the state Jalisco, which is not only home to the mariachi, but also to tequila. And not far from Guadalajara is the town called Tequila, where tequila comes from. So you can visit one of the farms, have a tour, have a tasting, and it's so much fun. I don't recommend you to go in the buses that take you around. Go to an actual tequila distillery, which offers tours and tastings. You can easily visit tequila as a day tour from Guadalajara. I also went to a Lucha Libre wrestling game there. So if you didn't do it in Mexico City yet, you can do it there. And I really recommend it. Three days in Guadalajara, including a day trip to tequila, is definitely plenty. And then... From Guadalajara, you will make your way to the coast of the state Nayarit. Sayulita is one of my personal favorite beaches. The sand is quite dark and there were all these little specks of gold in the sand. So when it mixed with the water of the sea, it was like the waves were sparkling with gold. And my first time feeling like I was in actual paradise, surrounded by palm trees, pelicans, and also dolphins. Next to Sayulita is Puerto Vallarta, from there, we took a boat to Yelapa. This is a beach that you can only reach by boat. Along the boat, we had dolphins. We had a sunset salsa party on the boat with an open bar. And on the beach, there were just palm trees, pelicans, just so incredible. 
and it included a snorkel tour, which was a lot of fun as well. And then from Puerto Vallarta, you can fly back to Mexico City. For Puerto Vallarta and Sayulita, you will need at least two nights, but you can definitely spend more if you want to relax on the beach. That means that this last itinerary, including Mexico City, you can easily do it in two weeks. Or if you have a bit more time, then take a bit more time, but it's definitely doable. Another incredible place that is not included in any of these itineraries is Baja California. There you can see whales, the marine life is unreal, it is the place to be for scuba divers and also nature lovers because the landscapes are so beautiful. I've also mentioned Dia de Muertos already, Day of the Dead. The best place to celebrate that is in the state Michoacán. You can go to Pátzcuaro, which is on the banks of a huge lake, and on the lake is an island called Janitsuo. And this island is said to be the birthplace of Dia de los Muertos and the traditions surrounding it. Near Pátzcuaro is also the cemetery of Tzintzuntzán. That is the cemetery that the film Coco is based on. And this trip, for me, is the most memorable one out of every single one of them. So even better than any of the other itineraries. Obviously, I'm very glad that I've seen all the rest. But Dia de Muertos in Michoacán has been the most memorable by far. Just seeing the decorated cemeteries, the people being there with their passed away loved ones in the middle of the night. And there is so much great street food to try there. So yeah, for now, those are the itineraries that I recommend to you guys. I hope you found these interesting or that you now have a better idea of how to visit Mexico because it is so huge. Make sure to subscribe like and hit the bell notification because the next video I'm making is one answering a lot of questions but also giving all my backpacking tips, all the, the best apps I used, my favorite Facebook group that has helped me a lot. Also the best and the worst things I visited and I will talk you guys through the budget that you will need to backpack through Mexico. So if you don't want to miss out on that one, do subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!